All right, guys, we got the truck in the shop. Step one is find some parts. All right, guys, I got the truck in the shop about a week or so ago and just been uh, making some phone calls and looking around, kind of shopping to see what's out there. I don't want to get too in depth with this build until I kind of know what parts are available or what directions I can go. Um, one of the first things we got to figure out is this is an odd height frame rail. This frame rail is like 13 inches tall and three and a half wide. Most trucks nowadays have an 11 or 10 inch frame rail. So just getting a section of frame rail has proved not to be very easy because we want to stretch that frame. And I did a bunch of research and found that um, I'm probably going to have to make frame rail. I got a guy that can bend it, he can make it, but I need to know what type of metal that is. And even though I don't know what type of exact metal that is, I've come to the conclusion that it's either going to be 4140 or A656 steel. A656 I think is probably what it is, but 4140 will probably work. Uh, I'm not going to get into a better, bunch of stuff about that. Um, but basically it has the tensile strength, the yield strength, and the elasticity we need to make a good frame rail. So that's important. Now, one thing I do want to cover on this frame rail is, um, as you guys know by now, Officer Hooper is a good friend of mine, which is a DOT officer. And I have talked to him in depth about the proper way to go about this, all the federal and state DOT regulations that go along with stretching this frame. And believe it or not, there's not a whole lot, <laughs> which is crazy. I know it's crazy. So a lot of it has to do with uh, proper welding practices and proper craftsmanship and all that stuff. Basically, in a nutshell, what Officer Hoover says is, is you got to use the proper steel and proper procedures and it can't be redneck together. So we can't go in here and put a piece of I-beam to replace a piece of steel or a piece of tubing to replace a piece of steel. And we can't have this thing all bubble gum together and just, you know, looking like a failure. It needs to be presented um, as factory. So I do know this frame rail is not heat treated. So welding on it is not, um, not gonna be a huge issue. And whenever it comes to welding this frame rail, we're gonna let man behind the scenes do that because we all know man behind the scenes knows all there is to know about welding. So we'll let him, we'll let him tackle that. So with all that being said, uh, metal is a little bit hard to come by right now. So I'm still trying to round up some metal. Having a little bit of a trouble finding the dump box I want. And that kind of comes down to, well, I'm being a little bit picky. I kind of know, I kind of know what I want. I really want a barn door or a high rise tailgate and I want a certain length and I want a certain this, I want a certain that. So um, I haven't quite been able to stumble across to what I want yet, but I got a phone call from Todd of Truck or Track. He says, I might be able to hook you up, head on down here. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're heading back to Truck or Track headquarters to visit with Todd see what kind of dump box options we got and he says he might even have a lift axle laying around so let's go shopping all right guys it has been nasty it has been snowing on us off and on all the way down here it is about an hour and a half trip from my shop to uh hour and a half trip from my shop to uh to todd's place here but uh, guess what? We have we have made it, folks. Imco Trucker Track World Headquarters right here. So let's go inside and see what Mr. Todd has to say for himself. Fancy seeing you here again. Well, well good morning, Mr. Durper. I am you? shocked that you're drinking water and not the nectar of the gods. Well, it's smart water, so it makes me smarter. <laughs> that's that's to be determined. Ah, it's delicious. Anyway, right. so you need to listen. You need to listen very carefully. No, I'm, I'm all ears. So I bought, a, I bought a project. Okay. And it's the typical Dirt Perfect project. It okay. uh, needs completely reworked from bumper to bumper. Okay, equipment project? Or? No, it's... it's uh, it's, we'll call it a truck. <laughs> okay, it's getting really fast. Awesome. It's, it's a big truck. It's a green truck. Right. It right now has a fifth wheel on it, and uh, you can't haul a whole lot of dirt with a fifth no, wheel. No, I mean, you want to get like road tractor kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but we need to convert it. We need to make it into a dump truck. Okay. So you want to take a fifth wheel truck and make it into a dump truck, which yeah. is not the easiest thing to do because they're not made for that. But keep going. I'm interested. Uh, 
I never do anything easy. I, I do everything yeah. the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. You I should know this. I, by now. I, I do know this. Like the simple that was thing. A dumb, that was a really dumb question. The simple thing to do would be to go out and buy a dump truck. That's no fun because yeah. I went to build a dump truck. No, no. We'll get, we make it all custom. We'll just make it totally custom. So, so we'll, I heard there's a rumor on the street. I searched the Trucker Track website. There's no dump beds on there. We are a large Crassteel dump body dealer. We've been one for many, many years. Crassteel's owned by Oxbody, Rugby. Uh, Federal Signals in there. Uh, there's quite a few different... Uh, in other words, it's a large company that does a lot of truck stuff. Now, we don't have it on truckertrack.com because buying a truck body is definitely not easy. And I can't wait to hear what you want. So, so, anyway. so basically what I'm hearing, the translation of what just came out of your mouth is I hand you a bunch of money and you hand me a truck body. So that's that sounds great. It's great. Yeah, and, that, and that, that's sounds like, that sounds like a very one-sided conversation. Well, I mean, I, I feel good about it. But the thing with truck bodies is when you're talking about an F550 or lower, they're pretty standard. You've got your 9s, 11s, you know, in that size. Uh, you choose option A, B, C, or D. Right, right. Now, once you step over that, you get into 33,000 GBW or above, everything becomes quite custom. You know, how tall. And the other thing you've got to worry about is can the truck withstand that much weight if I, I don't put a think the, I don't think the truck's going to be the problem here, buddy. What, what kind of truck is it? It's to be determined. Okay. You'll have, so to, anyway, watch, you'll have to watch the video because it's on I'll, the first half. I'll, I'll check that out. But anyway, you've got a lot of options. So so what do you want to do? Well, All right. So here's what. I, this is my problem. I've been trying to find a used truck bed. Okay. But I'm pretty particular about what I want because, right. well, I know what I want. Right. So right. Uh, first thing I think is the big one is 16 foot. Okay. That's not right. Which that's a pretty standard size, standard. correct? Yeah. The other thing is this particular truck I have sits fairly high. Okay. And I want the option to, I'm not worried about as much as capacity as I am being universal. And okay. I want the option to be able to load it with my small loader or a skid steer if I have to. Okay. So with that being said, I think I need like a 44 to a 48 inch side, tall side. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That's a little bit higher sided than I'm used to. We have two dump bodies at the bottom of the hill. They're both... Uh, I think they're both scissor always, but we'll go down there. We have a whole lot of dump bodies at the bottom. Right, well, the maybe I need to maybe I need to do some math. Maybe we need to back that down. What's the Well the best thing about when you're getting in this size dump body, I can make it whatever you want. They call them select nah, bodies. I'm so gonna, I'm gonna them. call your bluff on that. You ain't gonna make crap. Because you don't get dirty. We've done established this. Well, I mean, I'm not personally going to make it. Do you, when you go to McDonald's and you order your food, does that person make it take well, your money? I don't I'm think just so. Making sure I'm, we don't, just I'm just making sure we don't. I'm just making sure we don't mislead saying. here anymore. Anyway. No, no, I'm not personally going to make it. This All right. Is true. So I do want uh, this the side. But home. I am going to order it and oversee it. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll Administrative see. duties. We'll, we'll see. But that that side high is a big deal to me because uh, right. I want to be able because the truck sits high. Right. And I want to be able to load it with at least my loader. Uh, I like to be able to load up my skid steer if I can. So basically, the side of my truck, I need no higher than 10 foot 3. Okay. How tall is the truck? It's good four feet. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. We haven't named it yet, so. I can't wait to see it. Uh, it's going to be a sight to behold. Let yeah. me tell you. Well, the best thing is about doing a select body. I can get any option you want. We can custom make it to get it fitted. We can do the... AR4 for a rip wrap. We can do the back gate the way you want it. Uh, we can do anything you want. I mean, so we, the, limit. the uh, I think the AR4 for the bottom because it's going to be a debris hauling truck. We're going to be dropping rocks in. We're going right. to be rough on it. But the back gate, you bring up something good there. This is going to be a debris hauling truck. So um, I, I know a Crysteel makes a hydraulic tailgate on the back. You know, they do make a hydraulic tailgate. I haven't sold very many of those. It's a very expensive option. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of debris, we can do a barn door. Which is what's pretty high on my list. Actually, it's a necessity. Barn door is really nice. We've done a lot of barn doors. So, in other words, you're just going to pull a pin at the top, and you've got a lever, and then the door will swing open and close. Now, when you swing it open, that's all done manually. Right. So, you're going to have to manually flip the door open to put it in the lock position to dump it. That's not hydraulically done. The other problem is, too, you need to make sure it gets pinned back all the way because we've had quite a few people where they thought they pinned it back, and then when they dump the body, the door flies open and guillotines it off. Yeah! <laughs> and it's very expensive to put new pins in it. So uh, that's happened quite a few times. It's pretty funny. 
It's like, did you not feel the door, that huge door swing open? <laughs> they never, never do. Anyway, but yeah. So, one, I don't I'm going to try to draw a profile here. One thing I've got in mind is, the say, the size of the truck are this tall. Yeah. I want the tailgate to jump up and be higher so there's a chance of more stuff going through it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. We can do whatever you And then that's an option? I can already feel it's going to look like a... Look like the Titanic going down the road, but whatever you want, we'll do. If you want it pink, we'll paint it pink. It's all about, I don't care. It's all about because we're going to stick with black. The it's fine. We'll, and we'll go down here and look at a couple bodies and a few options. We've okay. got, uh, I think, two 11 footers down at the bottom. Here. Okay. Yeah. Now, well, the one other thing I got is, is I got some crazy ideas. And yes, I'll admit they're crazy. Uh, I don't think I want a cap protector on this. You don't want a cap shield? Well, so you're I don't want you. Anything, Chris, I don't cap. want you to provide me a cap shield. I might provide. You're gonna make a custom cap shield? Well, it's a possibility. That's interesting. I've never not ordered one with a cap shield. <laughs> well, hey, there's a Todd, first time for everything. If there's one thing you should know about <laughs> me, I like being different. I'm down. Let's do it. No cap. I'm sure that's fine. I mean, we've we've done the cap shields where the cap shield's actually mounted to the truck. The truck. Right? And then it, when it dumps, the cap shield stays on there. And then when the body comes back down, it's all one piece. But that's, I, if you don't want it, and, I'm fine. I, and the other option is, and maybe we can look at this when we look at one of your beds, is we can notch out where it's not as wide as the bed is the wide as the cap. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that so, too. I got yeah. all kinds Just of Just remember, ideas. there's going to be a dog box or a cylinder box inside of yep, this one. Yep. So uh, we've got to accommodate for that. So whatever you're going to do... To make a cab shield or make something custom in the front of this truck, you've got to remember there's going to be a cylinder living there too, and you don't want it where you can't get to that cylinder. Over time, everything tears oh, up yeah. over time. Just, you've got to be able to get to that. So anyway, all right. So uh, we get all that done. I can have it next week for what ten grandish. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if you want it next week, the freight's ten grand. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I get treated. But I tell you what, let's run down the bottom of the hill. I'll throw a jacket on. It's beautiful snow outside. It we'll is. Down the bottom of the hill, we'll look at a couple. I didn't, bring, I didn't bring a jacket because I'm a man. But if you need to get yours, that's fine. I've got three over there. You want one? Borrow one. Anyway, <laughs> no. Let's go check it out. I don't say this very often, Todd, but uh, you're right about this it's a little bit colder out here than i expected well i'll be honest with you i'm actually kind of hot inside because i got my heated jacket on it's awesome well i'm kind of balmy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right so, so this this is pretty similar to the bed i got on my uh, c8500 so this is uh this is what they call a select body we do this for a lot of municipalities um it's standard comes just like this the cap shield's already put on everything's painted ready to go on the truck uh and this is paint this is not powder coat uh, powder coat's really good, but powder coat's hard to touch up or fix yeah. anything. Paint's a lot easier. And still powder coat chips a lot more. Where uh, paint powder, powder coat does chip a lot more, and if it's going to come off, it's going to come off in big pieces where paint will stick. Now uh, this one here don't have the lights and everything. Is it ordered that way? Now if you look in the back, I know it's a it's a swimming pool right oh, now. Holds but water, in yeah. the back, that bag has got the wiring harness and all the lighting in it. That's a sealed bag. That I like I like sealed. the way you store them in the water. That's uh, they're, actually they're sealed. They're really watertight. I swear to God, they are. <laughs> is this is like some product testing well, or something? You wanted a jacuzzi? I got a jacuzzi. I mean, what's the problem? So uh, we also order them with the D-rings inside of them because we could pick them up with our overhead crane and lift them up. I always thought that was to tie down the salt box in them. No, we actually use those to pick them up. That's really? more for that than is, is that. Because usually the salt boxes will strap over on the sides so the guys can get down gotcha. on the sides. And well, I got an overhead crane. You got one of those? We do have an overhead crane. Thank my, you. Not my, as nice as yours. Mine's bigger than yours. yours is <laughs> so anyway, nice select... This is a Hunter Green too, by the way. Black and white, they hardly charge anything for it because they have it by the 100 gallons up there. When you get into greens or reds or anything like that, they call that a custom color, it's very expensive. So we try to get most municipalities to go with black or white. You'll see a lot of black bodies laying around right. here. So this, this here is just a standard tailgate. The only thing this thing does is fold up this way. This is a standard straight up tailgate. Nothing special. It's got the chains on it. Uh, air gate with chains to do, you know, for. Uh, now this tailgate will, which is what these brackets are for. This tailgate will lay down flat. Yeah, it'll go. It'll do. It'll do three ways. So it's doing one way right now. It'll open one way, and then it'll fold down the way out one way. Now, whenever I say I want a barn door option, that would allow this tailgate to swing around over to the side. Yeah, you're going to have a lever over here on this side. You're actually going to pull the lever. It's going to pop a pin down, and I'm almost positive. You've got to pull a pin and then it'll swing around you'll lock it over on the driver's side okay. i know that because we lost a barn door going down interstate 24 one time <laughs> the door we had it latched it had a spreader in the back and then all of a sudden it was like a gigantic black ghost was coming around the side of it and we were starting <laughs> screaming on the two-way stop 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 
And uh, it was so heavy that it actually pulled the truck over a little bit. It like the driver could tell because something was going. That, that actually brings up a great question. I forgot to ask you up there. So a 16 foot dump body spec the way I want. What am I looking at? About six thousand pounds. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. You're right because uh, you're going to be right around six thousand because we did a bunch of 16 foot Raptor bodies years ago and they were about six sixty five hundred pounds. Six five hundred pounds. They had, they had AR floors and. They were heavy. So that's the best kind of what you're looking at. Yeah. Well, and I'm not going for capacity on this truck. I'm going for durability. So I, I'm willing to give up some capacity for some extra weight. So one problem a lot of people don't realize is this is a short tailgate. And whenever this thing only folds up this way, it does not take a very big chunk of concrete, a stump, a piece of brush, or whatever. Next thing you know, it's jammed up in yeah, here. So this is more for a municipality, too. You know, municipalities. Uh, gravel, dirt, gravel, mud. Gravel, dirt, tree limbs, leaves, stuff like that. They're not going to be getting in the same thing you are. And they also want to be able to knock the pins out and take the gate off to put spreaders on. Spreaders on. Yeah. Now, this body is cross memberless. So, when I run my hand under here, actually, this is a cross member body. <laughs> Let me back up. We need to cut that. We'll go over oh, to this. We're going to leave, body. It. We're gonna leave okay. that in there. So, this is a cross member body. There's actually beams underneath here. I don't know if I can get down there to show them. Let me see. Yeah, you can see them welding right there. So, the beams. Okay. So let's walk over to the black body and hopefully it's cross memberless. So, I don't know why. It's like my wife, Todd. I love it whenever you're wrong. So these are, this, this is another cross member body. It's a little bit easier to see. Yeah. So there's cross members there. The problem with cross members is, is that stuff yeah. gets stuck in there. My C8500 is horrible about that. They're, half of them are rotted out. It used to be a municipality truck. And uh, it's a mess underneath there. Now, one thing, People may not know from the truck or track of the videos we do, you're like one of the largest snow plows providers in what, three states you said? Yeah, and uh, in the state of Kentucky, we sell more snow plows than anybody in the state. And then uh, we're, I know you're gonna laugh because of Tennessee, but Tennessee does get a little bit of snow. Uh, we're pretty big, we're actually biggest in Tennessee too. So what you trying Indiana, to say, if you sell like five snow plows down there, you're the big guy in the, on the block? It's actually seven. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, we're pretty, Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, Illinois, we're the big big guys around here. We're and a you big, sell huge for, snow dog uh, and Meyer dealer. Myers and do you sell any buyers? My, Myers, the Myers Yellow Snow Plows. Okay. And then of course we're the biggest buyers dealer around. I now mean, is that on, on is products. that stuff on Trucker Track? Buyers products is on Trucker Track. Meyer is not. We just sell the snow uh, snow dog stuff on uh, truckertrack.com. We have so much stuff we can offer, but it just gets off the chain. I mean, if you just swing around this parking lot between service bodies, flat beds, toolbox bodies, concrete bodies, and look at all the stuff we sell, there is no way you could put all that stuff See, on the, the The main question is, though, how much does the DIRT promo code get you? They get you 5% off, but it ain't going to get you 5% off no service body. I'm going to cut that off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call somebody on that. Come on, Todd. Come on. Now, All this right. Is not, this is a cross member body. So this is a, this is a cross member body, too? This is a cross member body, too. Well, you're just striking out here, bud. I'm striking out on the cross member bodies. But anyway. I believe you that they make them. And that's one thing I do want. I think that's one thing we've got to talk about up there is uh, the cross members bodies. They're slick. They're clean underneath. They're easy. To, they don't catch well, the gun. How, how do you make it cross memberless? You, uh, the, the floor becomes the structure, don't it? The floor, the floor is thicker. Okay. The floor has to be super thick. That, and that you're right. That takes just like a kind like, like a, a kind of like a van trailer setup. Well, I always thought of it like a Camaro, like a car. The Camaros back in the day, they were those uh, frameless bodies. You know, the the structure of the body of the car, the car. was what took it up and flex. So they didn't have a frame underneath them. Same thing with a cross memberless body. Um, but even with the thicker floor in the end game, you still end up with about the same weight because you're eliminating all the cross members. You, you do. You end up about the same weight. Same thing. Gotcha. But I like cross memberless better, but when you're in a bidding process with a state or municipality, you have to go with what you're giving. So, and that's why the cross members is cheaper? Is that why these yeah, have cross, cross members? members are cheaper. Yep. So are all these sold? Uh, everything down here sold. I everything down here sold? On. You've been busy, Todd. We are. This The end of the year is going to be really bad. We can, we're about... Uh, we're booked till March. And then the problem with that is people roll up here every day like, hey, can I get this put on right now? Right now. I'm like, oh, damn. Oh, damn. damn. People never no, do that. no, we can't. <laughs> All right. So uh, one last thing. Whenever I say I want the cab protector cut off, see, Todd, this looks really easy for me because they just don't weld this part on. Well, the problem with not having a cab shield is, it, it, or whatever you're going to do is if something... Hopefully you're going to do something because if a big rock or a big limb or something comes I'm over. I'm going to do something. Okay. As long as you're going to do something. Yeah, we can just 
we can actually just have this. Now the other, now the other option, Todd, is we cut it back like a foot on both sides, like right here. Okay, run stacks or something. Yeah. Yeah, we've done that before too. Stacks that that would actually be on. more preferred than what I told yeah. you before. Now we can do it like this. We stock a lot of CM dump bodies for the F550s and down because they're the only ones right now that you can remove. The cab shield comes in the body. In the, oh yeah, okay. And it's adjustable, so I can adjust. Which is this right shield. here? Yeah. yeah, I can take that out and and shim it up and down, and it'll fit a Ford or Chevy or any of that kind of stuff. So that's that's. That's got the uh, flip down sides on it. Yeah, I don't really like fold down sides. Fold down sides tend to rust out really, really bad because all the stuff gets trapped in there. But for a landscaper or somebody like that, I mean, it's, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's, it's, it's great ideal. Yeah, fold the sides in, yeah. So. All right, I hear a rumor that you may have a lift axle around here. Yeah, I do have a lift axle in the garage. You wanna see it? I do wanna see it. I'd love to sell it to you. <laughs> I bet and you tires. Would. I bet you would. Did you bring a big truck? I didn't even look what you drove. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, let's I didn't, check it I out. I didn't come prepared to buy time. <laughs> oh, did you bring, did you bring a check? No. Uh, is the, uh, is the, is no the, good. is the heat on up there? Yeah, the heat, my heat. Hang on, let me check. I'm good. Yeah, my, well, on my, my thumb's changing colors because <laughs> it's so cold. Let's go check it out. All right. It's not quite as clean in here as last time I was down here. I tell you what, we've been busy. You can see over here, Joey's actually putting a uh, snow plow wiring harness on a truck. Uh, he's wiring it, putting the plow bracket on and all that stuff. Most people don't understand that all the work's on the truck side. People call here all the time, like, hey, I got the plow, man. I need to slap that hitch on there and the wire. That's all the work, bro. There ain't no work. The plow's come put together. <laughs> They're already put together mostly. And it's just like anything else, if you're going to do it right. Yeah. It's, yeah, you got to take the truck apart. It's, so uh, a lot of pieces go into taking the front end. People would have a heart attack if they knew how far we take their trucks down. Now, what? Uh, how long does it take typically to put a plow set up on? Usually, we can kick them out in six hours. Really? Yeah. The first one we did took us three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, about twenty. Uh, that was uh, two no, what, twenty. Uh, two thousand five. Really? Yeah. Now you got them down to six hours. Six hours. Yeah. Three because, days and six hours. Yeah. And, and to be honest with you, six hours, you can't do it any faster. We've tried cutting, cutting corners or doing things. So is that, a, I mean, obviously you guys got better at what you do, but I'm sure the plow company got better at designing stuff to make it easier. Everything's gotten better, yeah. Everything's gotten a lot easier. So we've, we've been right there from the ground zero all the way to this point. Point. So we've been from the from Jump Street. When buyers started selling snow plows, we were a dealer. So, yeah. yeah. And, and then I also have a lovely yeah. tag axle. Back here. It's like you drug this thing out of the scrap pile. I did drag it out of the scrap pile. <laughs> we already had it in the scrap pile. Well, Todd, I'll be honest with you. I'm not 100% for sure if this one's going to work because of my drive shaft arrangement, but I don't know. There's only one way to uh, find it. Oh. you'd like to load it up and take it to uh, your uh, facility. Dirt Perfect Headquarters. Dirt Perfect Headquarters, I'd be more than happy to have Aaron. <laughs> yeah, because we know you don't get dirty. Well, I might take it along and uh, see. I might take it along and see if we can make it work, make it fit, and then uh, I'll report back. It's a brake light warranty. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we'll get you loaded up, take it off, and see what you can do with it. All right, man, sounds good. And then you're going to uh, make a few phone calls and find out. I'm going to make a few phone calls on the body and see if we can work out for you guys. It's not a problem. All right. I appreciate it. No problem. I'm sure you'll see me again. No, I'm good or bad either way. I'm sure you'll be. You're like a bad, <laughs> you're like a bad habit. We just can't quite kick you.
Well, guys, there she is. We got we got her loaded up. I did not quite come prepared. I probably should have brought a trailer, but uh, we got a little bit of a load on the old Chevy. But we're heading out. Weather's still pretty nasty. Big thanks to Todd Emco, Trucker Track. Uh, Todd's been good to me for a long time, way before ever YouTube ever started. And the service around here is just top notch. I just love it. They're a big place. They move a lot of volume. They do a lot of things. But uh, you can walk through the door and you're still number one. And that shows, which means uh, means a lot to me. I've never been much more than a small customer to these guys, but they've always treated me like I was a big customer, and that uh, that means a lot. So, anyways, I get turned around here. I should probably stop talking and uh, get turned around before I uh, run into something. But, anyways, guys, from here we are back to the shop. I've got a few leads on. Uh, I got a few leads on some frame rail options and i think what we're going to have to do now is go back and actually cut a pattern just cut a little sliver off the back of that frame rail and uh, see if we can take it over i found a machine shop that can uh, diagnose what type of metal it is and possibly even bend us uh the frame rail to match exactly what we got which is exactly what i'm looking for so that's going to be a wrap for this part of the video but stay tuned we're gonna we'll be back in the shop here in a minute a little bit uh, we'll get to working on that other one the other thing we got to figure out is this lift axle todd had um i don't know if it's going to work because the way my drive shaft works on my truck so i need to get this back to shop maybe mock it up do some um see if we can modify it to make it work or see if it's just going to be a lost cause and we're going to have to go a different route so we'll uh we'll see how much time we end up getting to uh do that so but guys I'm going to put the camera down, find me something to eat, hit the road. we got about an hour and a half drive back. I'll see you guys back at the shop. Alrighty, so we have made it back to the shop. I got the lift axle I got from Todd unloaded there. I'm not um, I'm not for sure if this thing is going to work. Todd's like, just throw it in the truck, take it with you. If you can make it work, great. If you can't make it work, you can't make it work. So I tell you what, I tell you what my concern or my issue is is some of these drop axles have what I call a drop axle in them. So see how this one here comes straight across. Some of them go down and come back up. And then this cross member here is, is not even in existence. I think they beef up these. There's different ways they there's different ways they go about doing it. But where that comes into being a problem is especially on this truck here. See how low this drive shaft hangs? Uh, this is the frame. There's the drive shaft down there. I need that lift axle assembly to be to either straddle it and have that axle go over, down and around, and come back up. All I have to block that whole assembly down, I think it'll be too low. So I don't know. I honestly, guys, I honestly just don't have the prices right on it. I'll say that much. But if it don't work, it don't work. I don't have high hopes for it. So we're going to let that thing sit on the back burner for a minute because I can't even do a mock test fit up in here until I get this frame stretched. So it's here it's on the shop floor and we'll see what goes there so on to the strain front did that frame stretching so i got a hold of um, a company over at Owensboro called modern supplier modern welding a uh, pretty good size outfit and i was talking to a guy over there about uh, making frame rail and he's like oh yeah we stock that stuff and they actually call it uh, core 10 steel um a, uh, a 19 inch wide piece is 20 foot long so you probably buy a 20 foot long stick which we're probably going to end up using most of it for what we're going to do 
So he basically said, uh, cut me a profile of your frame, bring it over here to me, and I'll, uh, I'll bend you whatever you send me the profile to to match it up perfect. So my first intentions were, well, I'll just go back here and cut a little quarter inch sliver off the back of the frame and use this profile. But it's all welded solid down here and it's bent a little bit tweaked up here. So I don't know if that's the best profile to send him. So I think what I'm gonna do is I got this piece of wood, I got a stubby pencil, and I got a tape measure and a speed square. I think I'm gonna make me a profile out of here so he can use that to slide down in there and see what goes and uh, get him that. I think what I can make him here will be more accurate than what I can cut him off back there. I think, I think, I don't know. We'll see. Let's make this and see how it looks and then we'll decide which one will be more accurate. So let's start whittling. Alright guys, first and foremost, I am not a carpenter. Yes, I used to build houses for a living, but not a carpenter. But that's what uh that's what I come up with. Question is, how does she fit? If you ask me, that fits very, very, very snug. I guess whenever they bent this, that frame rail is not just perfectly square, like it is close. But it is not perfect, but that end up shouldn't be the perfect profile for the outside. I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up making the inside profile for here. That way they'll have a profile for each piece, the inside one and the outside one. So if the other one turns out as good as this, I think the challenge is then in their hands. So let me make that other one and we'll check it out. There you have it. We got an outside profile. We got an inside profile. They turned out pretty sharp. I think I think that's going to be about as far as we can go tonight. I need to get back on the old interwet, internet and do a little bit of shopping to round up, do some more research, see what Ty comes up with. So let me do some thinking and some head scratching, maybe a few phone calls, and I'll get back with you guys in a bit. All right, guys, it's the next morning and it is colder than a well digger's hind end, but we are about an hour and a half from home at uh, kind of a little equipment peddling place. I've done some business here before, some pretty good guys, but they have this brand new, never installed 20,000 pound drop axle. And this one here has what we're looking for with the uh, dropped axle in it. So. We're going to load this old girl up and take her home. They got a really good price on it, especially for being a new one. I think that's just exactly what we need. So we're one piece closer, one piece closer. But man, they got, uh, they got all kinds of crazy stuff around here. They got engines for days. They got a generator over there. We got the lift axle loaded up and paid for and we're ready to roll to the house but uh we're gonna go we're gonna go about three hours the other direction and uh stop by the spot where we can hopefully get some frame rails frame rails bent so road trip here we come how about we do this the uh 
we do this the easy way and voila guys we are here this is the place we're going to right here modern supply company pretty good size uh pretty good size outfit here they do they do a lot including building tanks and all kinds of stuff that's actually my aunt right there i think i know you i think i know you <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we rolled in over here. Just caught up with my cousin I haven't seen in a while, which is nice. I'm going to grab my patterns here. We're going to head inside and see what they can uh, be for us. Let's do it. All right, guys, rolling out of uh, Modern Supply here. Look at all them tanks over they built. This is actually the company that built the uh, fuel tanks down there at our store. But uh, talked to the guys in there, gave them my patterns. They thought my patterns were absolutely awesome, by the way. That's uh, some of the best patterns they ever seen, so I'll take a little bit of pride in that. Thank you. But uh, anyways, they act like that's not a big deal at all to uh, do what I asked them to do. They said they'll make it right to the pattern, which hopefully they can accomplish. I'm pretty confident in their ability. And then we'll have some frame rails, so uh, one step closer. But we're heading back to Derby. Going to head back to Derby, do a little inventory on what we got, maybe recap where we've been, what we did, what we got to do yet, and uh, get this lift axle unloaded. So on the road again. Let's do this the easy way again. Well, boys and girls, there she is. She is unloaded in the shop. You can see the obvious difference. Hell, that axle's got that big loop in it right there. And this axle goes straight through. Keep in mind, they're oriented differently the way they're sitting here. This one's up on end and that one's sitting down. But that should give us the clearance we need to be able to clear that drive shaft that's hanging down below the frame. We gotta get the frame stretched to get this mocked up in there to see how it's gonna work. I got a feeling this one may be a little bit of tweaking yet. But it's a lot closer to fitting than that one. So just got a call from the guys over at the metal shop. They confirmed all my measurements. Looks like, looks like what they got to work. They're in the process of bending the frame rail. Waiting to hear back from Todd on a price from the bed. So for now, we're going to wrap this video up. And I'll give you guys a little bit of an update uh, as I get updates. And hopefully the next week or so, we'll have a lot of parts, parts rounded up. And we can get started on the old girl. So stay tuned. All right, guys, it's probably been close to three weeks since the beginning half of this video and everybody started rounding up pieces and parts, but uh, I think we're getting close. I think we're getting really close to getting everything rounded up. I want to show you a few more things I got. One is we did get the frame rails picked up from Modern Supply and Welding, and they are, I'm not going to call them perfect, but they are pretty doggone close to our pattern there. Um, let's put it this way. They're close enough man behind the scenes that he can make it work. So that's a cool deal. Uh, I ended up picking up, this come from a recommendation from Jason Works a lot. I've been wanting to get one for a while. I thought this project may be a ex good excuse to get one. It's a prime weld plasma cutter. Um, man, I, I just don't know much about plasma cutters. I didn't want to spend big dollars on a nice one. I I'd pick up a cheap one for 400 bucks, give you guys a review on it, see how much we use it. If we use it a lot, eh, maybe I'll buy a new one, maybe I'll buy a big one. So I also picked up this thing here. And this is a, a water media blaster. I had this crazy idea of thinking uh, maybe we could, uh, this, this cab on this thing's aluminum. So I thought, you know what, maybe we can blast this thing ourselves because I want to get a really slick, good paint job on it. And I couldn't just straight up sandblast it because I was afraid it was going to uh, damage the aluminum. And I didn't want to take all the glass out of it and mess with all the seals. Bad news, that thing's a joke. <laughs> I gave it a quick test run, worthless. Uh, good news is I found a buddy up the road. Well, he's not a buddy yet, but I think he's going to be a buddy. I found a guy up the road. He just got a brand new dustless sandblasting system and uh, he said for five or six hundred bucks 
he can blast the hoe truck for me. That way we can get her down to bare, uh, bare aluminum, bare metal. And uh, actually the fenders are fiberglass, fenders are aluminum, hood's fiberglass, cab's aluminum, frame steel, but either way he can get it down to bare metal for us so we can get a pretty cool and uh, slick paint job on it. Obviously you guys seen the tag axles we got rounded up. The other thing is I've been working with uh, Todd from Trucker Track and we are this close. We are this close to uh, having us a brand new 16 foot cry steel dump bed. Um, the, the price is good, the specs are good, there are just a few tweaks I want to make to it uh, as far as the way the barn door opens, the way the headache rack mounts, and uh, just, just a few things I'm trying to get dialed in. Hopefully I'll have some prints for that and it'll be close, but it looks like we're going to go with a brand new dump bed on it. Uh, the, this truck is in such great shape. We've got a brand new lift axle on it. It's gonna have a brand new paint job. I just hate to put a, a, dent, a dented up, beat up used bed and I couldn't find one spec the way I wanted it. So I thought, what the heck guys, let's go all out on this truck. Let's go ahead and buy us a brand new dump bed for it. I got a feeling, I got a feeling this is gonna be one awesome, awesome machine. So hopefully next time we get this thing on video here, a uh, man behind the scenes just got laid off his bull maker job. He's coming back to the shop. We got a little bit of maintenance work we need to do on the low boy trailer. And it is full steam ahead on this project. So uh, stay tuned. There should be some actual working projects uh, on this coming soon. But uh, that's the update for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment guys. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.